Houston, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. When I was a little girl and people were always asking me, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I used to always go, I want to work up there. As an engineer, you, you dream of a job like this where you get to follow in the footsteps of, of some of your childhood heroes. And, and of course, for me, the Apollo missions, seeing these, these folks on TV step on the moon and work for NASA, uh, as an engineer, it's, it's just a dream to be able to say, you know, I want to do that too, and here I am. Only a dozen Americans have kicked the dirt on the lunar surface. It was a bold and dangerous engineering achievement driven by a political agenda. The Apollo program was important because it showed that we could leave our home planet and visit an object like the moon. However, what we want to do next is learn how to live and work off of our home planet on another planetary surface, like the moon. By developing this capability, we'll be able to know how to go throughout the inner solar system, which has many important destinations, both for science understanding and also may have economic importance uh, for not only our generation, but for future generations. The Soviet Union and the U.S. had peppered the lunar surface with soft and hard landing spacecraft. The Soviet's Luna 24 was the last of that program, returning soil samples that contained traces of water. Much of science and technology has advanced since the 1970s. The mechanism of world politics has evolved, new partnerships have formed, new players are looking skyward, and more recently, private enterprise has taken up the challenge. With the faintest of inklings that there may be usable water on the moon, a forensic focus has turned to the southern polar region. Scientific programs in the 90s refocused on the moon. Japan was the first to revive lunar research and only the third nation to achieve lunar orbit with Hi-Ten on a dust collecting mission. The US followed with Clementine, a joint NASA military project it completed a mapping survey of the lunar surface along with gravitational data and evidential proof of possible water ice hidden in a south polar crater in permanent darkness. Four years later, Lunar Prospector mapped lunar resources, gravity and magnetic fields. It was also impacted into the southern region of the surface to elicit more evidence of water ice hidden in the craters. Europe's contribution to this resurgence in lunar exploration began with the launch of SMART-1. This tiny, ion-propelled satellite catalogued key chemical elements on the surface. It also enhanced the theory that the Moon was the result of a collision between Earth and a smaller celestial body called Theos some four and a half billion years ago. Japan's second probe was Selin better known in Japan as Kaguya. It continued extensive observations of the lunar crust and also carried the first high-definition cameras into lunar orbit, giving us a clearer picture of the rugged surface. Another proof of capability, this time by India. It also carried a NASA mineralogy mapper and an impact probe. It played a key role in the confirmation of water hidden in the southern lunar pole. Eight months later, NASA launched the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, or LRO. It has spent the last few years mapping and scanning the lunar world with sophisticated sensors and continues to return a wealth of data. The Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter is, as its namesake says, a reconnaissance mission to the moon. Our job is to take a suite of very powerful scientific instruments and make an atlas of the entire moon, in some places in very great detail topography, mountain heights, mineralogy, temperatures, abundances of resources, including potentially the, the intriguing possibility that there's water at the moon. We put all this together into a data set by flying low over the moon for a year. Um, and we, and we, this is the data that the, the, the people designing the human systems, designing the systems, picking the sites, need to take us back to the moon. This robotic mission commenced operations in June 2009. 
It was hoped the suite of sensors would fulfill several scientific goals, not only for the Moon, but as a framework for understanding planetary processes throughout the solar system. The LRO instrument suite is comprised of six instruments and one technology demonstrator. And they are geared towards providing us of a variety of data sets ranging from a thermal map of the moon, uh, global topography, and most importantly, looking for resources like water ice on the moon. The entire suite should provide more of an atlas as opposed to a map so that we know where to go on the moon, where to have the uh, safe landing sites, and where to put things like lunar outposts in the hopes of having human exploration in the near future.